So today we're going to be gluing and painting and finishing this grapple gun from the Batman Arkham series. My preferred first step to working on a 3D print like this is to prime the piece with some filler primer spray paint. So that's going to be the first step. I'm going to take these guys outside, spray them up with some filler primer spray paint and that should remove a lot of the visible layer lines and 3D printing artifacts. I just finished priming all the required pieces with some filler primer. Uh, again, it is to fill in the layer lines to make it look less 3D printed to and to just smooth it out. Now something odd that happened is, I don't know if it's something wrong with my particular bottle, or if it's a nozzle clog, or if it's done something wrong with the paint, but it shot out all these weird particulates. So it gave it a bit of a rough surface, and it can be sanded off. And I think it still did the job. It's, it still filled in the layer lines, and this piece will still look all right, but it's just kind of weird that it shot out all this particulate. It's visible there. So what I'm going to do is, because these pieces, the ring goes inside the handle, uh, it would be difficult to paint it once it's already glued. So I'm going to go ahead and paint these rings, then start the glue up. And I'm going to start painting up these wheels. I'm going to be using some dark, very dark matte black. I like to also use this as a weathering paint because it thins very nicely and it stays thin. Give this a quick once over. And I might thin the paint to get in those cracks. I think I might. I have some pre-mixed thin paint from a previous project. I keep in a jelly jar. Again, this, this color is th watered down, so that's what it looks like when it's mostly water. Now, another positive for priming the piece before you just start painting is that PLA and a lot of plastics and I think a lot of 3D prints in general are very hydroscopic. They suck up moisture and so what happens is you can paint the piece just the way you like it and you can be, you can be completely done with it and then by the time you come back an hour or two after it's dried, you'll find spots that you missed simply because the paint was sucked into the material. You know what I'm going to do? It's not exactly accurate, but I want to hit this with a layer of rub and buff. So while I'm letting the wheels dry, I might as well start painting the lower half of the grapple launcher. I'm going to be using that same color that I did earlier, and just with a light coat.
All right, so I'm gonna let those sit for a little bit, but the wheels seem to have basically dried, so I'm gonna push these guys aside. Ooh, so I'm gonna take you some silver leaf rub and buff, just hitting the high spots of these little wheels. I'm using a paper towel as an applicator. Just gonna take a little bit of this silver rub and buff. Take this paper towel. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of it. And I'm just gonna hit the high spots of the disc. Alright, so those ended up a little bit heavy on the rub and buff. The next step is to attach the pegs to the disc. Just rest them inside the grapnel. And so you, there's a series of small pegs that insert into the corners. And are used for aligning, aligning the two halves and the disc. So my glue of choice for this sort of job is Gorilla Glue. So I like Gorilla Glue for the large structural elements that can be glued over a long period of time that don't require quick set. Like super glue sets very quickly, but is not as strong as something like Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue is just about one of the strongest adhesives that I know of, plus it has an expanding property, so it fills in, fills in gaps and seams, can be used to also hide mistakes either artistic mistakes or mistakes in the print job. So next step is to close up the piece, squeeze it all together. Glue looks good. As I said, this Gorilla Glue does have an expanding property, so it does need to be clamped. Otherwise, it would just expand the whole piece and that's not good. Okay, so these are the basic remaining pieces that need to go somewhere. This just this is just the, the button for the grapple. Uh, these are dowels connecting the front to the rear. And this is the piece that slides, that slots on to these, the actual hooks of the grapple hook. So for the grapnel hook pieces, uh, rather than silver highlights, what I actually want to do is paint the whole thing a bright metallic silver. Bring back the paint plate. And the first step to getting something a bright silver is to do a dark undercoat. So while these are drying, I'm going to set them aside for a second and start on this, uh, start on the front portion, the big chunky square. This particular color is very good for things like the insides of prop gun barrels that you want to have very dark so you can't see that there's nothing actually inside the prop. The next step is to go back to the grapnel hooks after they have thoroughly dried, hit them with a little bit of this nice silver color. This is a this is the reason why we put down that that black first so that this shows up brighter. In the meantime, I can start on the button and I'm going to do that in a red. It's already got a layer of black and if I do something like a candy apple red then it will darken the red into something of a uh, maroon, something muted, but still red, something not too flashy, 
but something that still stands out to the point of saying, hey, this is a button. Just applying this pretty lightly and see it just turns this deep red. With these detail sections done, I'm going to wait for them to dry for a bit and in the meantime I'm going to start on the forward sections. So it's time to declamp and as you can see this is what I was talking about. That's why I clamped it. Gorilla Glue has a tendency to expand out from its seams. Next step now that the hook parts have dried is to glue them together. So I'm going to use Loctite. This stuff is gel so it takes a little bit longer but it has a little bit more of a flex to it so these pieces are less likely to snap out once they're set in place. So it seems that most of my glues have dried up in this summer heat, uh, so I actually have to resort to hot glue. And to be honest, hot glue is not terrible for this kind of situation. Just gonna use some flush cutters to remove some of the excess Gorilla Glue before I go in to glue down the button. And finally, hot gluing pegs to slot into the front. Now from here, the base of it is done. Now it's all about adding the details and cleaning it up. This cleaning has kind of chunked up some of the surface a little bit. So I'm gonna do some more painting, but then also it's mainly on the high spots, which are the ones that would get damaged in use. Just to give the piece some color depth so it's not just black on black on black, I'm going to put in a little bit of medium gray. Just it won't be too noticeable just so that the details can be seen a little bit better. This is before and this is after. There's a lot more texture to it. So now because of this, it's not so black on black, it's more interesting. It's hard to weather something that's dark colors like this because most of my weathering paints are dark and so they would all get lost so now with this light uh, this this medium gray coat it the whole piece kind of it's still black and dark and all things batman but it becomes more visible put it all together i'm going to keep it pressure fit versus versus gluing in the grapnel hook so it can be removed. So there is the finished Batman grapnel hook.